What's up? It's Robert Fithin, and recently I tried one of those blindfolded uh, record pulls, you know, where you put a blindfold on, you spin around, and you pick five random uh, records out of your collection, and then you instantly review them with no edits to kind of to kind of prove that you know your record collection inside and out. You can just pull five records with no, you know, preparation and just start talking about them. Well, I saw Mazzy do it, a, a couple of other people did it, and, you know, you blindfold yourself, spin around, knock around, knock over the camera, knock over the... I said I was going to do this, and I was not going to knock anything over. And sure enough, when I did, knocked over this lava lamp. Ah, That's why this one is all cloudy. This one is all clear. And uh, when I went to retrieve the lava lamp, my mic fell off, turned off, and then I recorded the entire video, all the album reviews, with no sound. So, yeah, good times. So I put the, a little video up on my Instagram of the whole thing, and not the whole thing, but just the, you know, the explaining that I that this is a total fail. And I got some nice comments. They said, well, you should just review the albums anyway, over again, and, uh, you know, just, just review the albums. You already picked them out. And I thought that was nice, so I thought I would go ahead and do that. I gave each one of these an, another listen, even though some of these I've heard, you know, like the Van Halen, I've heard like a, a thousand times. So here they are, uh, Jackson's. I think this was the first one I pulled, you know, with the blindfold on and everything. Victory. This came out in uh, 1984. Now, a lot of people consider um, bad Michael Jackson's follow-up to Thriller, but I was there, you know, in the 80s, and I can. This was really the follow-up. It seems like this is. Uh, this came out. Everybody considered this to be, you know, oh my, this is Michael Jackson's next big thing, you know, even though a lot of the songs in here are not don't feature Michael Jackson. As a matter of fact, it's uh, really a family uh, affair here. Um, eight songs. This kind of, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say it flopped, but it definitely didn't do as good as Michael Jackson's solo stuff. A uh, huge tour around this that I don't think uh, lasted more than just a few dates. A bunch of stuff got canceled. I remember uh, Pepsi did a huge promotion with it. We had, we, I think my sister still has the, the Pepsi soda cans, uh, you know, with Jackson's all over them and everything. But yeah, this album, um, it's better than I remembered it. It starts off with uh, Torture which is a Jermaine Jackson song. It has Michael Jackson in like a verse or whatever. Bizarre video with like S&M and whips and, and weird creatures and, and, and you stick your hand in, a, in an eyeball and, and just all this crazy stuff. I don't think MTV played it a lot. I don't really remember it that much. But yeah, Torture is kind of a cool song. Um, Wait is actually, uh, I think that's Tito singing that one or, or Randy maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Wait, though, is pretty cool. It starts off like a, you know, kind of a synthy pop thing, but actually it's got a pretty good hook to it. So you shouldn't have made that a single, really. These songs on here, by the way, not in order, in great CBS 80s style. See order for sequence. They're all out of order. I don't remember what's after that. One More Chance is uh, a song um, that sounds like, oh, baby, give me one more chance. That's not what that is. It's a slow song called One More Chance. Uh, Be Not Always. You finally get to the first Michael Jackson song, End of side one, and it is the worst song on the album. It's this really bad ballad that's like really wimpy and weepy, and it's just awful. Uh, Be not always the you know the Michael Jackson song on here, and then side two starts off with the uh, uh, the kickoff single, State of Shock. Do you remember this when Mick Jagger teamed up with Michael Jackson for this bizarre State of Shock song? It actually rocks a little bit. I remember when it first came out, uh, people were kind of like, "This isn't even a song. This is like a." A drum machine with a guitar riff repeating over it. And then Prince basically did, you know, the song Kiss like three years, four years later, and that was a huge hit. But I just don't think that people were ready for uh, State of Shock uh, at, at this time. It was kind of a weird song. Uh, it's Michael Jackson and Mick Jagger together. I don't think that's a good pair, pairing at all. You know, if, my, if, if Mick Jagger wants to sing with David Bowie, great. If Michael Jackson wants to sing with Paul McCartney, wonderful. Uh, Michael Jackson and, and Mick Jagger don't go together that well. And State of Shock is just this, you know, they're, they're singing like, she, the stupid lyrics. She, she looks so great every time I see her face. She's got me in a state. Woo! State of Shock. It, it just, cool guitar riff that just keeps repeating over and over again. But yeah, I mean, this song came out, there was so much hype. I remember there radio stations, you know, you heard news stories about radio stations were playing the song like, non-stop for like 48 hours just over and over again and then it just disappeared it was like yeah we're done with that so yeah state of shock starting off uh side two uh i think you know uh is being our uh, the hurt i think is uh, just kind of a really falsetto kind of song doesn't really work and body 
Uh, we Can Change the World, that's Tito. That's kind of a tropical thing. That's kind of nice, actually. It's not too bad of a song, We Can Change the World. And then uh, Body just sounds like a... Uh, just like a kind of a ripoff of Want to Be Starting Something. But yeah, they produce their own stuff. This stuff is produced by, uh, you know, Michael Jackson, produced by uh, Tito Jackson, produced by Jackie Jackson. So they produce their own stuff. I don't know if that was such a good idea or not. Not as bad as I remember it. The Jackson's victory. Actually, this is the way I remember it on a little cassette. People think cassettes are so cool. Look at all this artwork here. Look at, look at this. You get, you know, this nice gatefold, and you get the full picture here. When you fold this out, you get a nice inner sleeve and all that. Here's what you get with the cassette. There it is. In the tape. Yeah, moving on. Van Halen drew this. Picked this out blindfolded. This is Diver Down, of course, from 1982. This is their fifth album already. You know, they, put, they were putting them out, man. They were rolling them. Uh, a lot of people don't, <laughs> I am not having the best of luck with these five albums, I'll tell you that. Anyway, a lot of people don't like this album anymore, I don't know why. When this was out, you know, in the 80s, and you know, and then in the late 80s, this was a classic, everybody loved this, but people kind of panic these days. It is full of covers, it might as well just be a covers album, really, and it is really short, too. Uh, but you know, it has where all the good times gone and, um, uh, pretty woman with the, with the guitar intro intruder on there. I love that. Even though it is just kind of a bunch of guitar noise, uh, dance in the street, you know, all remakes, but they're great. Uh, hang them high is pretty good. Uh, a lot of people like little guitars. That was never one of my favorites, but you got the little guitars, a little kind of a Spanish thing going on there. Happy trails, another cover, but this time they're going, who's that? Roy Rogers. <laughs> And uh, Big Bad Bill of Sweet William now. Nice uh, bluesy kind of uh, comedy song there about a guy that's uh, uh, basically PW. You know, he, he gets in a relationship with a woman and now he's doing the dishes. The Full Bug is also kind of a song, uh, kind of a hard rocker uh, at the end of the album. It kind of gets forgotten about. But it's pretty cool. But yeah, I mean, the, the highlights are the, the remakes and the, and the hit singles. And it is a very, very short album. But it's a great party album. It's a great Van Halen album. Like I said, they should have just... Uh, you know, waited and put Hang Em High and, uh, you know, the full bug on the next album just made this a full covers album. I think people would have been maybe a little more satisfied. Never, never was I don't know about this cover either. That's kind of, you know, generic. But yeah, Van Halen, Diver Down. Uh, <clears throat> probably not my favorite Van Halen album, but certainly, like I said, not bad. It's, uh, it's pretty good. It's great. It's just really short. But yeah, there's the CD. Never even took the thing off of it. But yeah. Good stuff on the Van Halen. I, I definitely, obviously, you know, you prefer their first one or maybe uh, uh, 1984 or Van Halen 2, but that's good in there. Diver, diver down. Uh, also pulled Queen 2 when did the uh, blindfolded uh, pull there. I think I've talked about this uh, on a different video. I don't know how much of a, you know, in depth I went with it, but um, I, I did mention that my pressing of this sounds horrible. I don't know about first U.S. pressings. But this much later Electra pressing there on the later 80s label is, this sounds terrible. Uh, this is, sounds like it's, it's a very canned kind of sound, like it's a, like a fourth generation version or something. It's a Roy Thomas Baker production, and, and he has this style of production that's almost like a wall of sound type thing. Uh, I'm assuming, I, I would assume that when you press his stuff, you have to be very, very careful. It's a very delicate procedure because it's a very delicate uh you know, kind of production sound, and they blew it on this uh, issue of Queen 2. I have the CD, and uh, it sounds uh, much, much, much better. Heard the stream, it sounds much better. Never heard a UK pressing of this. I'd be interested to see, uh, or hear, or know how that uh, sounds. But anyway, the album is obviously their second album from 1974. It's broken down into two sides, not side one and side two, White Queen side and Black Queen side. So the White Queen side is supposed to be more like angelic and beautiful, and the other side is more dark and fantasy and, and whatever. But I, I definitely preferred side one. I didn't notice this until uh, until I just played it again recently. I never noticed that the one side, the white side, is all written by Brian May, except for the last track is uh, Roger Taylor. And then the Black Queen side is all written by Freddie Mercury. So you get a Brian May side and a Freddie Mercury side. But uh, I definitely prefer the, the first side. But you have songs on here like, you know, I pull, I could have pulled any Queen album. I, I pulled the one with Ogre Battle on it. Great. Ogre Battle, the Fairy Fer Feller's Master Stroke. 
you know, song titles like that, White Queen as it began, The March of the Black Queen, you're not going to find stuff like that on uh, later Queen albums, thankfully. Uh, but yeah, a little more of a progressive rock than pop or rockabilly throwback or whatever they were doing later, dance music on some of their stuff. But yeah, um, Father to Son's pretty cool. White Queen is liked by a lot of people. It's I, I don't really care for it. Um, Someday, One Day is kind of like a lighter thing with Brian May. The Loser in the End's pretty cool. Kind of a cautionary parental thing. Cautionary to the parent and the daughter there from, uh, I, I think it's Roger Taylor singing that one, but that's a pretty good way to inside one. That's probably my favorite song on here, really. Ogre Battle. Kind of a cool, get it's really cool beginning to that with like a lot of backward stuff and then guitar looping and then spitting into like a, a regular, you know, the killer guitar riff intro. But it's about an ogre battle. I can't do it, man. But I, you know, ogre battle, come on. And then the Fairy Feller's Master Stroke is, uh, I guess that's the name of the painting. Um, you know, more kind of medieval, you know, fantasy type stuff. Uh, Nevermore is just a quick, uh, you know, little instrumental there. The March of the Black Queen. You know, it, it, the Seven Seas of Rye ends it all. That's their, uh, their, I think, their first UK hit. Didn't do much here, but great piano on that. Really frantic uh, piano work starts it off. And then a nice little, like, two and a half minute long uh, tune there. You can definitely tell that that is uh, the single release off of Queen 2. Like I said, stay away from the uh, U.S. pressing of this, later ones especially. And uh, let me know if you got a U.K. press, uh, how it sounds, because this sounds terrible and it's not even my favorite queen album and i could have pulled any other queen album that's blind pull but no i pulled this one used to confuse people because they thought bohemian rhapsody was on here because of the cover but that's on the uh not even the next one the one after that actually no yeah right okay anyway um <coughs> gbh some punk from the uk these guys started off in the 70s along with you know the damned and uh, you know all those guys and uh they were still going into the 80s this is I believe it's from 1987 uh combat label and it has an insert here with uh, photos and uh, lyrics. But yeah, um, very, very, very high energy here. And throughout, it is intense. It is party music. The, the vocalist has a real kind of like snotty kind of sound to his voice. Where he's, rah, 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 you know, he's just throwing the words out there. Uh, throwing the lyrics out there. But yeah, high intensity, great guitar work. And more than just like the the punk rock stuff, uh, these guys got a lot of like basic, uh, you know, like rock, hard rock riffs going on in here sometimes. Uh, also got little elements of speed metal going on in certain uh, places. Uh, but like I said, high energy, high energy. Every every song is ro just roars, just rips. Uh, like I said, these guys from uh, the UK. The album is called No Need to um, Panic. The the band is GBH. I think that stands for Grievous Bodily Harm. Here, maybe. Uh, maybe it stands for something else, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, these guys, uh, just severe punk rockers. The only complaint, you know, they sound like they just plugged in, rocking out, definitely talented, definitely tight songs too. Drenched, drenched in this, this echoey reverb. I don't know why they did that. It sounds like the band is playing in a large, empty room. Uh, I really wish I could hear the drums, especially, uh, more clearly, you know, more bam like right no no you know processing kind of stuff this thing is just just drenched in echo and i don't know why but uh gbh um no need to panic was another one i pulled there and for the final one more punk rock here this time from die toten hosen uh 100 fünfundzwanzig jahren and uh what is it auf dem krusig ins gluck i think that's Marching into happiness, maybe maybe it's glory here, but uh, marching into happiness. I don't know. You can see the band here. Um, this is from 1990, by the way, and these guys have been around for a while. I don't know that much about them, but you can see the cover here. Um, you know, Sid Vicious has 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 passed on here. They they got Elvis, unfortunately. They got Jimi Hendrix. He's down, and I believe the glasses here are John Lennon's. But uh, yeah, but uh, thankfully, De Totenhosen are. Uh, rocking out there and they still got the uh, they're still marching into happiness um the totenhosen means the dead pants and for the longest time i thought the dead pants was a german expression for like a deadbeat like somebody who doesn't uh do anything who has no ambition you know deadbeat um but actually the totenhosen means somebody that's impotent like dead pants means that you can't get it up did not know that. My story with this, and this is just punk rock all the way through. It, it's kind of got like a, a kind of a pop punk feel to it. 
kind of like a Blink 182, but this is like nine. This is like 1989, 90, like before Blink 182 was out. But it definitely has that kind of power punk pop sound. You know, it's uh, you know, got a little bit of sheen on there. It's not raw and whatever. So, and these guys kind of sing in, in harmonies that remind me of of that kind of sound too. Now, when I got this, I was taking German. I'd already taken it in in, in high school and whatever, and I was taking it in college, continuing. And uh, the college radio station um, uh, had this thing about this group, and I found this record, and I couldn't believe it. I found a German, you know, punk rock record. I was so excited. I wanted to take it to the class and show the class, you know. And um, so I went up and showed the uh, instructor, you know, look, I've got a German, actual authentic German rock album. Wow, you know. And I showed it to her, and I showed her the inside. I'm like, wow. And she sees the stuff in here, and she's like, yeah, um, I can't translate that for you. Sorry. Especially this thing right here, which is apparently something Germans say when they get very upset. Ficken bums and blazen, which uh, I'll leave you to look up what that means. It basically is three different kinds of, uh, of sex going on there. You can... <laughs> You can let your imagination run away with you. But yeah, went ahead and took that to class. And the teacher, uh, you know, the instructor kind of passed it around and said, you know, you, you can look at this if you want to. I'm not translating any of this for you. This is a punk rock record from Germany. So yeah, the Totenhose in there. Fun stuff too. Uh, you know, it's probably the kind of thing I won't visit a lot. Uh, a lot of it is in German. They do have a few English songs on here. And I guess a lot of special mixes. I'm not sure if this is a, a compilation or... Or what? Like I said, I don't know that much about the Totenhosen, but yeah, just uh, love basically the memory of having this, uh, finding this, and then taking it to the uh, taking it to the German teacher and having her say, "Yeah, no, no, not going to translate that." So that's my five uh, blind pull albums. You had the Totenhosen, GBH, Queen Two, uh, Van Halen, uh, Diver Down, and uh, the Jacksons' Victory. Hopefully, you enjoyed the video. Those were my reviews with sound. This time, is this on? Yep, it looks like it's on. So it looks like we're good. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please uh, consider giving it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing so you don't miss future videos. Love all the vinyl community videos that I'm watching. I'll keep making comments. Please comment on this one if you can uh, take a second to do that. And uh, thanks again for watching.